Hey everyone and welcome back to another Blender for game development tutorial. So we're going to be moving on now from the assets that we've created. We've got our scenes ready and exported into the given game engines and we're now moving over to rigging and animation. So there are already a lot of different tutorials out there which show you how to create a complete humanoid, how to assign the bones and everything. So I'm not going to go into that much depth. We're going to make a very very simple shape based character as this is going to be looking more at the nuances of using Blender and some of the things that we need to account for if you're developing for uh, maybe the Unreal Engine and Unity at the same time or something. So if you have been enjoying these videos, this course and the content so far, do remember to subscribe to the channel to be kept up to date with all of the content coming from any of the players on the channel and do hit that like button. So let's get started creating our character. So to begin with we're just going to set up a very simple character and then apply the bones. So to begin with I'm going to press shift A to create a new mesh. I'm just going to start with a standard sphere. Um, and I think we'll make some kind of cylinder based, a very simple kind of cylinder capsule character. So to do this uh, with the sphere selected, I'm going to go into edit mode, press GZ1 to move this up so that the pivot point is at the bottom of our mesh. I'm just going to go into front or side view, press Z to go into wireframe and just select the top of this mesh, press GZ and scale this up a little bit. If we go back into edit mode, I'm just going to take a look at some of the information on the item. So I want to make sure that this isn't too tall. So four meters is a little bit too tall. I'm going to try and keep this still roughly the size of a humanoid. So if we just scale this down a little bit and give this a size of something, that's fine. Around about two meters or just below is the kind of uh, height that we're looking for here. In fact, I'm going to make that a little bit smaller and then grab just the top of this again, scale it back up so that he's a little bit less chunky and that should be perfectly fine. So if those changes made again of course we've uh, got our scale offsets here so we just want to press Control and A and then reset all transforms so that we still have a 1.7 meter kind of character uh, but the scales are all back to a uniform one. And the final thing is so that we can get some uh, flexibility and to allow the armature that we're going to create to actually move certain components in this I'm just going to press Control and R inside of edit mode and add some ring loops here so that we just have something to distort and manipulate so we can add, add some basic animations at the very least. Okay so we have a slightly more higher detailed model now which is going to give us some freedom and flexibility for animating and the last thing is in object mode I'm just going to right click and shade this smooth. We'll just go down and make sure that the normals have been set to auto smooth this for when we export and that should be perfectly fine. Now just before we do get to adding and rigging this uh, very simple character what I want to do as well is go to the material slot going to add a new material and we can just leave this to be completely default. The reason for this, just a quick aside, is in newer versions of the Unreal Engine. If you're trying to import this into Unreal without a material on a skeletal mesh for some reason in 4.24 at the moment, you will get an issue where the uh, the engine will just crash if it doesn't have a material to automatically bring into the engine. So just make sure that you have a material assigned uh, before bringing this over into Unreal. And I've just gone ahead as well and upped the roughness of this inside of edit mode, lowered the metallic just so that we've got a nice kind of flat design to work with. Okay so on to our very simple skeleton now. We want to create our armature. So like with pretty much anything else we shift and A to bring up our uh, add menu and we're going to add an armature. At the moment this is a little bit big. We do want to be very careful of this uh, where we want to again keep the scale of the armature to one one in one. So what I'm actually going to do is go straight into edit mode with the new armature bone selected. Press G and Z with just that top section selected and make that a little bit smaller. So this is going to be our root bone and I think what we're going to do for our capsule character is we're going to press E and Z to extrude another bone and we'll make this one a little bit bigger. This is going to be our body bone and uh, maybe press G and Z to bring that up a little bit more and then E and Z and then E and Z one more time so that we have our head bone. And in fact, I think I do want the head bone to be quite a lot smaller than the body. So I'm going to select this, press G and Z just to raise that up. And this is how you can very easily move around the, uh, the bones in a skeleton that you're creating. You've got the same kind of options as you have with any standard object. You've got G for movement so you can change the way that this is moving. And again, you can constrain those axes by pressing G and X if you just want to move it sideways. 
uh, or forward and then G and Z if you want to move it up and down for instance. So that's going to be perfectly fine. This is going to be give us something to animate and uh, work with at the very least. So before doing anything else, what we should do is go into uh, the easiest way to do this is to have our armature selected. I've got my pie menu option, otherwise navigate to pose mode. So I'm just holding tab to go into that. Uh, but of course you can access all of these from up here in the top left. And in pose mode, I'm just gonna go to the small bone icon down here. And I'm just gonna make sure that we rename these. Uh, this is especially helpful if you're working with bigger rigs like uh, the humanoid or some animals, just so you can keep up with what all of the bones are related to. So the bottom bone, like I said, is our root. So I'm just gonna rename this to be root. And then selecting the second bone, we have our body. So I'm gonna call this one body. And finally, we've got the head bone. So we'll just call this one head. So this isn't actually gonna change very much. The engines work fine if you don't change the names of these. Uh, but like I said, this is gonna make it easier, just a good habit to get into. And it will make it easier as we're going through and animating things. So we know what bit of the armature we're animating and what it's going to respond to. So back in object mode now, the final thing is we want to assign our skeleton to our mesh. Obviously at the moment, if we move things around, they currently don't have any relation to each other. So to do this, we want to select the mesh first of all, so our character mesh, and then we want to shift select our armature and press control in P. We have several options here. The ones that we want to do are the armature to form, and we're gonna apply this with automatic weights, which means it's just gonna take in the uh, relative location of each bone to what it's closest to on the mesh, and it's going to weight paint them, which will assign how much they deform and get moved when you're moving those individual bones. Now again, there's a lot more in-depth topics on a good form of like weight painting and how to do that for very complex meshes. But like I've mentioned, we just wanna get something animated and see how that works in the engine. So we're gonna go with automatic weights so we can get an idea of what this is responsible for. And to see this, we can very simply grab one of our bones, make sure that we're in pose mode. And then if we, for instance, grab the head bone and rotate this, we can see that the part closest to the head bone has been weight painted quite well. And we get that rotation from the head bone. Similarly, if we move the body bone around, then we're gonna get the movement and rotation around the body part. And then the root is gonna control absolutely everything else. So everything's kind of flowing upwards from the root. So if you want to scale the whole object or rotate the whole object now, then we use the, rope, the root bone. If you only wanted to scale and rotate a certain part of the body, the head or the body, then you would grab the bones weight painted closer to those. So I'm just gonna control the head out of all of that to get our object back into a kind of normal position. And that is our character now rigged and ready to go for the animation process. So I'm gonna keep the animation in a separate video, which will also cover the full pipeline of exporting. There's one more thing that we do need to do though, and I want to give a very quick demo of what happens in the Unreal Engine specifically if you don't do this step. So you need to follow along with the change, but not the exporting at this stage. So I'm just gonna quickly fade over to Unreal and show you the result of skipping the next bit. Okay, so I'm over in Unreal. And I just wanted to, like I said, demonstrate this very quickly because I think this will make a lot more sense if you're following along with the step-by-steps and this all works the first time, that's gonna be great. Uh, when you forget to do this a bit later, it's great to see uh, the, the failure kind of happen on a tutorial because then hopefully you'll link that back to what caused that issue and you'll know how to resolve it. So inside of the Unreal Engine, I've got our skeletal mesh. So this is our character. It works perfectly fine. Uh, Scale-wise and everything, this has been brought in exactly as I'd kind of expected, as a very small character in comparison to uh, maybe the fence scaling and everything was a bit wrong inside of Blender. But the scale of this is actually working perfectly fine. Now the issue is that I've created a very quick uh, empty animation, and this is where the issue currently lies for uh, exporting things from Blender to Unreal. So if we go into the animation, you can see there's already something a bit weird that we're not getting a preview. So if we go into this, it looks as though there isn't a skeletal mesh, but we can actually see down here, uh, we do have a skeletal mesh. It's just very, very small. So this is something that people get a bit confused with from Blender to Unreal at the moment, is this has been scaled down to 0.001, I believe. So if we were to animate the skeletal mesh that we now have in the scene, then it would look as though this just uh, randomly disappears. In fact, we can see that uh, very, very quickly. So if we apply this, 
bring that over here. It looks as though the skeletal mesh is gone when in fact it's just been scaled down very small. So back over in Blender, uh, like I said, you don't need to worry about the animation stuff at the moment. This is just a quick explanation of why we're making this quick change we're going to do now and what it fixes. So what we want to do to avoid this happening is very simply get the uh, skeleton that we've created or the armature, currently called armature over here. And we just need to rename this to be skeleton or anything else really, body, bones, whatever you want. So I'm just going to call this scale. And then with absolutely no other changes, I'm just going to very quickly show you again, back over in Unreal, that this will fix the animation scaling issue. Okay, so back in Unreal, like I said, the that is literally the only thing that I've done. I've then re-imported the same assets back into Unreal to replace them. And you can see now that we've got our demo image for the animation. Uh, if we bring our skeleton or character into the world, change this to have the animation asset and plug that in. You can see it doesn't disappear and all of the scaling works out perfectly fine. So if you ever get stuck, especially from Blender to Unreal and it looks as though anything's disappearing, just remember you just need to rename the armature to absolutely anything else and it will work perfectly fine. So with that done, make sure that you save your current uh, project. We have everything ready to go, rigged and set up for animation and we'll cover that in the next video. Okay, so I'll leave that video here. As always, if you enjoy the videos or find them useful, do remember to subscribe, make sure you hit the like button and click the notification bell to be kept up to date with any of the content coming from any of the playlists on the channel. As ever though, thanks for watching and I will see you all next time.